Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. And on today's video, we're gonna be using one of our eight inch by 12 inch gasoline powered jaw crushers out here in the field. We got some quarry spalls and some rounded river cobble that we're gonna be crushing into some of these darn potholes I keep falling into. So we'll get right to crushing here so you can see how it works. We'll take a look at the uh, results of our crushing. And then later in the video, we'll talk a little bit more about the jaw crusher. And we'll take a look at some of the rock we're crushing to fill these potholes. I'm sure some of you guys are thinking, why are you crushing rock? Why don't you just go buy crushed gravel and fill your potholes? And a lot of our customers have a huge abundance of rock either on their property or they have old broken concrete they want to get rid of or they have ranches or limestone quarries on their property and they'd rather uh, crush rock in place rather than having to buy it or haul it in from somewhere else. And there's some parts of the country where their rock isn't available or the crushed gravel is really, really expensive. And so this is an alternative uh, for people who have stone available to crush on their property rather than buying expensive crushed rock and hauling it in and filling their potholes. In this configuration, obviously the crusher is mobile. It's mounted on the truck and we're crushing as we go. There are lots of other options as well. You could stage the crusher in a fixed location where there's a source of rock, crush on site, and then load it under your truck and truck it only a short distance to your potholes or your work site. So the crusher doesn't necessarily have to be mobile on a truck, but I wanted to show this option as a possibility for those of you who would like a mobile crusher that you can take to your site and crush on site. And this shot has obviously been sped up, but I just wanted to demonstrate that we could very easily move the truck to a new location and position it so that it was right over a pothole. And then I'd hop out, crush some rock into the pothole, and then I could back up or pull forward as needed. So it really is very mobile. We didn't shut the crusher off at all during uh, our, our moving around. So the crusher was running, the truck was running, and it made for a very, very fast and efficient way to crush gravel right into the pothole So here's a small section of road we just got done with, and we've crushed all, filled the potholes, we've tamped it down. Um, and here's, here's kind of our strategy with this, is we've got, we've got our crush down to about inch and a half or two inch minus. There's a little bit of fines that comes with the crushing, but we've been taking fines from the edge of the road and bringing them on, and you can see filling in some of the gaps. Uh, and we're, we're crushing fairly coarse, because as the cars come through and they hit this coarser rock, it doesn't splash out of the pothole that you just filled. So there's, it, there's enough mass there that it'll lock together and hopefully seal up good for the winter. And, uh, and as you can see, we did, I don't know, maybe a dozen potholes here, and it took about half or two thirds of a yard of material. So uh, it really takes a lot of material to fill some of these potholes. So if you guys got extra rock laying around the farm or the ranch, this is a great use for it. And it can save you a lot of money on uh, cost of gravel uh, to just fill your potholes. All right, so we've got two different types of rock here we're gonna be crushing. These are those quarry spalls I mentioned earlier. 
And these are about eight or 10 inch minus. And uh, these crush really good through the jaw crusher. And they're kind of uh, uh, metamorphosed limestone a little bit. So they, they'll lock into the road really, really well. Um, this, is a, this is a really good material to be crushing. And the jaw crusher just eats it up. Here on this other bag, I wanted to show you guys, we get a lot of calls for farmers and, and guys who have field stones and rounded stones that come up with their plow every spring. Uh, and so this is, this is really, really hard stuff. It's been river rounded and it's essentially the hardest stuff in the river that's left over. Um, we got some quartzite, we got some granite, we got some basalt, uh, some schist in here that's rounded. So we really have a huge mix of material. And uh, so I wanted to demonstrate the crusher with those two different types of material. The, the quarry spalls were crushing a little bit coarser and the rounded stuff we're gonna crush a little bit finer because you don't wanna have big rounded surfaces going in your potholes, they'll just roll around. So we're gonna crush this pretty fine and then we'll crush the quarry spalls uh, a little bit coarser so they, they can lock in and, and uh, not splash out of our potholes. And the uses for our crushers uh, really are as diverse as our clients. We've sold to people obviously filling potholes and crushing uh, demolition and concrete, but we've also sold a lot of crushers to the granite countertop industry, as well as trail crews or people who need crushed rock remotely to the government, to foreign governments. We've actually sold some crushers to areas that have uh, bombed out buildings and they're tr crushing up the debris and reusing it for building material. A lot of stone block manufacturers will buy our crushers to crush local stone to be used in uh, concrete and cinder block manufacturing. So really there's a huge diversity of applications for these crushers just to make crushed rock. It doesn't necessarily have to be solely for potholes. I wanted to talk a little bit about the maintenance costs and the operation costs of our jaw crushers. And these smaller ones, we have a 6x10, an 8x12, and a 10x16 that can all be powered with a gasoline engine. And the cost to run those varies obviously a little bit, but mostly the wear cost or the maintenance cost is for the jaw plates or the jaw dies themselves. And those typically run anywhere between 50 cents to about a dollar per ton of material crushed. And that's going to depend on the wear rate on the plates themselves based on how hard your material is to crush. But then also uh, with this 8x12, we only used about 1 to 2 gallons of gasoline to crush these 2 yards of material. So the operation cost is very, very low as well. And so in a, in a, out of a yard of material, you may only have about $5.00 associated with the actual running of the crusher and if the rock's free uh, it can really make sense for some of our operators to buy our crushers just to crush gravel for their projects. What are we doing? That one? Okay. I think we're just going to take one side. Yep. All 
All right, guys, we've uh, run out of quarry spalls, and now we've tightened up the jaw gap some. So it's going to be about one inch minus or maybe even three quarter inch minus. And we're going to run this section of potholes right here with some of the finer crushed river cobble. And we'll see how it looks. But um, again, we're crushing it fine to, uh, to get rid of those rounded edges as best we can so it doesn't roll out and slide out of these potholes when cars go over it. So we'll get this thing fired up and we'll crush some rock in these potholes. Now I know I'm going to get comments here, so I'll just come out and say it. The stationary jaw die there, you can see, is moving. And it's really not supposed to be, and we were out in the field, and there was a couple bolts that hold that thing in place that had actually come loose, and I did not have a wrench, so I could not tighten it. But this was a cool enough shot that I wanted to put it in so you guys could see how the jaw crusher operated, but that stationary jaw die should not be moving. The comment earlier about the stationary jaw die moving brings up a good point. When these crushers are brand new, we suck down the bolts and the nuts as hard as we can with our impact wrenches, but on a new crusher, these things are under immense force and sheer force, and so it's really, really important that after the first couple hours of operation, you recheck all the bolts and the nuts and make sure they're still tight, because there might be a little bit of a burr or the, the part didn't seat quite right, and they work a little bit and loosen up. So it's really important to check the tightness of your bolts, and it was my bad in this situation that I didn't bring a wrench with me uh, to, to check and tighten our bolts. Another comment I know I'm going to get is I should have brought a bucket with me. I could have filled the bucket up full of the, these uh, quarry spalls and the rounded river cobble and just dumped them in and choke fed that jaw crusher. But again, I forgot a bucket. So uh, this is probably not the most efficient way to operate this crusher, but it's what I had. And again, uh, the term choke feeding is these crushers, they, you really can't jam them with rock. So you could fill up that entire orange hopper completely full of rock and the jaw crusher would just choke feed down through it and just crunch it as it fell down into the crusher. So you really can't overfeed these jaw crushers and uh, that's one of the, the big advantages to them, especially when you're loading either but with a bucket or with a small excavator is you can just pour the rock to them and they'll just crunch through them and when they're done, they're, they're ready for more. So you, the, the size of the hopper you have is really the limiting factor on how much you can load into these crushers at any one time. This is just a quick shot to show you guys the amount of give from the leaf springs in the truck. And with this 450, it really didn't seem to bother it at all. And uh, the crusher just sat there and bounced a little. So it wasn't a big deal. And uh, the springs on the truck or a trailer shouldn't be a problem. So here's our potholes behind me after we crushed our uh, river cobbles into them. We pretty much used up the whole bag in this section and one uh, a little bit farther up. But um, you can see here, this is... This is kind of the size we're getting. It's a strong inch, maybe inch and a half. Uh, but the, you can see the variation in rock there. There's a bunch of different types of rock in there. And it's all real angular, so that should pack in real good. And as you can see, it's just a F450 truck with a 8x12 jaw crusher in the back. So for all you guys that have ranches or farms or borrow pits on your property or an excess rock, uh, you know, and you're interested in getting one of our jaw crushers, we manufacture them and sell them. So you can find more information on our website or uh, give us a call and you can find our contact information in the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.